Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Whoop, whoop. Jan 1, 2024. How's it feel? Feels wild. Feels like a clean slate. Yeah, sure. Feels like it to me, at least. Let's get, let's hope it's a clean slate. Let's Absolutely. get into it. I'm feeling, I'm feeling on fire going into 2024. You know, I saw a tweet and it was like, I haven't been seeing anyone say 2024 is their year. I guess y'all learned your lesson. <laughs> <laughs> and I laughed. Well, for let sure. me be the first. 2024 yeah. is my year. Believe that. Believe that. I love to see that. Uh, so I have some uh, cues for you today. I heard you have some A's. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Let's hop in. What Olympic sport could you not come in last for? Now, let me set the scene. You don't have to qualify or anything. You're basically like a wild card going into the Olympics. And you have to pick a sport that you do not come in last in. What sport would you choose? Let me be very clear. There is not a single Olympic sport that I could participate in that I would not get dead last by an astronomical amount. Do you think that there is a sport that you could compete in that you would not get dead last? Yes. What? Marathon. Are you joking me? Because there are people who do not finish. So. Probably from ailment or yes, injury. Exactly. They're so going to DQ. If so facto, I would not come in last. So you're saying that the Olympic athlete who is preparing for the marathon, who unfortunately gets injured, you're just going to hop in and Prey on their downfall. Not prey on their downfall, but it's that's just the only way you don't get last. That there's people every year who don't finish. You were saying that you won't get injured. I'm hoping. <laughs> if I'm choosing out of everything, like you said, I know other than speed walking, I think I could be a real competitor in speed walking. I think you'd be blown away with how quickly some of these people walk. Oh, for for sure. By no means am I saying that I think that I am. I'm saying that if I were to say anything that I could even have a chance in actually competing and not just because I'm winning by default, well, not winning by, not losing by default, it would be speed walking. Listen here. I think it would be fantastic for us to have just a normal human go and do the sport alongside these Olympic athletes at the same time. Like they should have an extra lane for this I've swimming. I've always thought that. To really showcase how incredible these athletes are. And I, cause it, it rubs me the wrong way when people are like, oh, I look how slow that guy is. Can you believe he's getting his ass kicked? Can you believe that? It's like, no, 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 he would destroy you. So yeah. why are you talking smack right now? So you don't even have one you would want to see? Not a single sport that I would not get dead last in. You, you have to choose one. I, I can't. I would get dead last in all of them. You have to choose one. Can't. Well. I guess we're just going to be sitting here the whole time because <laughs> you got to choose one. That's not part of it. You want to know the one that I would get so badly last place that they would probably just turn off the lights? What? Like a long distance swim. <laughs> Well, yeah, they would have to jump in and I would save be, you. I would be treading water. I wouldn't even be swimming. I'd be like trying to just tread water to get from end to end. It would take me forever. Oh, my gosh. So? <laughs> swimming. Swimming is the one you were not going to get dead last in, even though you just said it would be the one you get dead last in. Exactly. What's the Olympic sport that you enjoy watching or some of the Olympic sports you enjoy watching the most? I really enjoy watching swimming. I I like all the um, – track sports as well. The sprints are a little bit more enjoyable than the long distance runs. Um, I like the speed skating. I also like the figure skating. Mm, that's very cool. I so impressive. Yeah. Unbelievable. So impressive. Unbelievable. Gymnastics. So cool. Love that. Um, I also like basketball. Like if mm -hmm. you, I know, do they happen at the same time? Are they it's like winter. I don't know which ones are which. So basketball is enjoyable. That's probably the the quick list. What are your favorites? Really love the gymnastics, the figure skating. I love all the track events and swimming. I love the partner um, figure skating. Yeah, that one's so cool too. Yeah, me. I just basically have my jaw on the ground the entire time. I can't fathom being able to do that. A lot of this, uh, uh, like bobsledding. Yeah. Bob sledding is an interesting one. Couldn't Love imagine that. doing that. Also, like, uh, what's the one where you are you're skiing downhill and it's like you're it's a race. Like you're trying to get down as fast as humanly possible. Maybe I could do that one. Oh my gosh, no! <laughs> what those people are insane. Um, I don't know the. I want to be speed. Now speed. we're getting kind of into the Winter Olympics. But I also like the half pipe for snowboard. Mm -hmm. I love any of the snowboard events. I love all the skiing events. Yeah, I think those are super cool. Incredible to watch. Mm -hmm. I agree. 
And, you know, Cool Runnings is just such a good movie that it just makes you want to be a bobsled fan. Absolutely. A hundred percent. All right. This is this topic is one that there's a lot of mixed opinions on. Okay. And it was a very big topic recently on another podcast. Okay. All right. So can is it okay if a girl farts in front of you? <laughs> I will have to say yes. This changed for me. This was not my standard prior to us dating and now so being married. So no one before me had ever farted in front of you? I'm not kidding you. I don't think I've ever heard my mom or sister fart. I don't believe that. You're saying none of any girl that you were with I really ever... don't think so. I'm sure they I'm sure they farted at some point. I'm sure they did. But I probably was offended. <laughs> I probably was been out of shape. Oh I, ha- my gosh. I have been trained now. Trained? By this beautiful blonde haired girl Hot here. girls have stomach issues. Do your thing. Okay. This was a huge debate on Nightcap when Coach Prime, aka my bestie, was guest, I was about to say guest starring. He was a guest on Nightcap with Ocho Cinco and freaking Shannon Sharp. And Shannon and Prime both said that they... W- would not allow it. They basically, they need to go into a different room, a different area to go and fart. A different wing of their house yeah. specifically, yeah. And Ocho is out here standing out for all the hot girls. And he's like, if, you're com- if your partner's not comfortable in front of you, then they should be comfortable in front of you. And I just really agree with Ocho. I, I don't think it's realistic to just never fart in front of your significant other. Well, I think there's a couple of of, of different ways to going about it. Like okay. if you were to it down. if you were to walk up to me, lift your leg and fart, like yeah. as a joke, well, I'd be like, yeah. okay, that's a little, a little far. If you're sitting on the couch and you just fart, I don't have an issue with that. Mm-hmm. But if if we were to be cuddling and you farted on me, yeah, problematic. I I can see that. Yeah. I agree with both of those scenarios being problematic. Yeah, like hot girls can still be respectful, you know. <laughs> hot girls with stomach issues, you know, can still have boundaries. Exactly. All right. Uh, well, I definitely think that you should be able to fart in front of your significant other. Again, not being a, a gross about it, but just. It is natural, and hot girls also have IBS, so it's just part of the shtick as a whole. That's fine. If my if my trade off to having you be happy is letting you fart every once in a while or multiple times throughout a day, (laughs) I'll take it. All righty. Okay. What are your thoughts on sponsored posts and ads? I think they need to be well done because a lot of people just kind of like, here's a product, here's a discount code. Now back to the show. It's like, let's have a little bit of a skit built out. Let's go through like an actual uh, write-up of how you are presenting a product. Like uh, there needs to be more thought into an ad or how it's being incorporated into a show for there to be be value. Because I, as a consumer, will reward like real thought going into ads. Like I like to support shows that think through these things and like allow for it to be a fun part of the show still, even though they're selling something, because I am fully aware doing all this is expensive and there has to be someone to pay for these things. And so, and and I'm consuming these shows for free. Mm -hmm. Um, So understanding that that's how the whole thing can keep going. You've got to support the shows that you enjoy. And so I'm on board for them unless they're just done poorly, uh, which I think when they're done poorly, I mean, I guess some people probably still make sales, obviously, because mm-hmm. they keep doing them that way. But I find that it's it's just uh, they need to be done well. Yeah, I I still like I don't love commercials or things like that. I don't know someone who like loves. I enjoy commercials. commercials. OK, I enjoy good commercials. Wait, OK, yeah, I can give you that. Like if someone is is creating a story in the commercial and it's it is captivating and you can follow along through the storyline of a 45 to 60 second clip. I find that enjoyable. Okay. I'm going to say my favorite commercial recently. Okay. And, you know, it's uh, rightful that I'm wearing the Packers uh, sweatshirt. It's the one where it's they're going into a Packers fan's home and then they all have on Kirk Cousins jerseys. (laughs) Yeah. And they're like, what? He's such a good guy. Because every single person I know that watched quarterback afterwards was just like, Kirk is such a good guy. And Packers fans, yourself included, diehard Packers fan, never been a Vikings fan, are like, I 
just want good for Kirk. I hope Kirk does well. And it just like was so in tune with culture at the time. And it was done so well. Yeah, I'm huge on commercials nailing culture, like understanding who they're talking to and what the storyline that they're creating and really being tapped in. Yeah. And I used to think before I was on this side that basically... I I guess I wouldn't say that everything was a sellout, but I was very rubbed the wrong way when especially like influencers or stuff did ads. But I think that it does boil down to what you said of not only putting thought into it, but it also being aligned with you for what you're doing. Like for us, it wouldn't make sense to do an ad or try to sell something that's like a diet pill. It would just be kind of like, why are you doing that? You're obviously a sellout just trying to get that coin. But exactly what you said is that when you're consuming something for free, there has to be a way to monetize it. Otherwise, like let's take Instagram, for example, the people that work on Instagram, I know that there's now you can pay for something. But before that, how it'd been for forever is that it's just free. And it's like, think about all the people who are working for that business for something that is not paid for. Then it's like, okay, the only way to pay people that are working for that business or to make a profit on something you are providing for free is to have ads in place. And so I think that I look at it much differently now in just seeing that I don't look at it as, oh, each person is a sellout for doing ads. It's really being able to think, okay, if they are providing something that is free of charge for me, a few ads running during it, I shouldn't be been out of shape from. And if I like it, like they're not forcing me to buy anything. If I want to, then I can purchase from there. I have a hot take. Okay. Recently, Patrick Mahomes posted that he is sponsored by Prime. That that is selling out. Sell out. Bro, (laughs) dude, this is selling out. This is not a product that he's going to be consuming on the sideline. But then every kid is going to be assuming that he's consuming it on the sideline. Thus, they're going to be consuming more of it. And so it's just association to the person where that person is not going to actually be using the product. And that's where it's the most frustrating thing. Now, he may be drinking it in his free time, what have you, but in the trenches of the game. I can assure you he's drinking something different. Yeah. And that's the frustrating part. Yeah, I agree. I, I I think that it really does have to be aligned with the person as a whole and then also going about it in a way that's enjoyable to consume. Because I, I understand of if I just sit here and I blankly read off of my phone, hey, you should buy this thing because of X, Y, and Z, then I'm not really motivated to buy that. But I think that more people should be I think people should be okay with ads, again, if they're consuming something for free. Yeah, 100%. Now, if we're to talk about Hulu. (laughs) (laughs) You're not consuming that for free, though. That's what I'm saying. That's a paid good. You pay extra to even get no ads, and then there's still ads. Makes we, no, that's something I can definitely be but, frustrated about. But you about. speak with your dollars. And so we canceled our account yeah. and moved to YouTube TV. And that and really it's a much cut better deep experience. for them. You know, it hurt them. the $85 a month <laughs> yeah. really cut the into the million top dollars a month for no ads, which actually has ads. I hope you feel that pain, Hulu, <laughs> because I canceled after all that time. Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. All right. uh, What age did you feel like an adult? I still don't. I feel a little bit more like an adult, I suppose, but I would say uh, maybe I started to feel more like an adult as I got on my own. So when I you know, more so was self-employed and doing that. So 23 mm-hmm. would probably be the most adult situation because I was paying for all of my, at 23, I was, we were married. Yeah. No? I believe so. Maybe 22 then, because it was kind of like the transition time of, I still felt like a kid though. Yeah. I look back and I'm like, no, you were a kid. Like every every, like every time I look back at any of those ages, it's like, no, you're a, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. You were really you someone then. growing up where you're like, when I'm 18, I'm an adult? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't think so. I thought that my shit didn't stink for a while. Mm-hmm. So I thought that I was on top of the world basically until I 
got to college, I feel like. I feel like college was kind of the eye-opening experience of like, okay, this there, the world is much bigger than this little town that I had grown up in, and there's so much more to offer, and it was very humbling. Yeah. I think, honestly, the age for someone being considered an adult should be at least 21. Like, in regards to voting and, like, being legal, I think that it should be 21. But it just really comes down to their experience. Like, what is their life experience leading to age of 21? Like, there are going to be people that are much more adult-like far earlier than 21. And there are some people who get to 40 and they're, like, still a child. Well, for sure. But I think that – I don't think that there's a lot of negative that would come. I think that really a lot of positive would come from moving that. In regards to, like, what do you get when you turn 18? You get to be able to vote, and now you're legal in regards to being with people older. Yeah, you, you older. can get tobacco. You can, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, tobacco, sure, fine, whatever you want. But I think that it sh- it would help if it got moved to 21 at least for, for voting or being like the age of quote unquote consent. I don't even, here's my thing. I don't think that voting should be age dependent. Well, yeah, I think, I think that, that should be quiz dependent. Yeah, I think that voting should require a test prior to voting that you have an understanding of what you're voting for. Like you understand what the the goal or um, what's the word that I'm looking for? The, what that person is standing for that you are voting for and then what the other parties are voting for, that you're not just voting whether you're red or blue. It being like, I'm in these party lines and I only vote for this party. I think that that is crazy. It is wild to think that you would be in agreement with every possible idea that someone else has. Like, of all the parties, we're going to agree with different things. And then it's like each of them are going to have their own good ideas, but none of them are going to be, this is the only one that's right. It's like, this is this is a ridiculous model that's not going to, it hasn't worked, but it's it's forced into the world because that's how it's always been done. Yeah. But I just, yeah, I, I just don't feel like 18 was adult enough. Yeah. I, I think that, but here's the thing is that all the things outside of um, like the tobacco, the alcohol, all those things are going to be attained if the person wants it. Like they're going to find a way and get resourceful to get them at any age. Yeah, but the two things I'm mainly talking about of voting age and age in- of consent, oh. then you can't get sure. those necessarily at a day. Like Sorry, you I, wasn't can, even, I was but, not taking age of consent into consideration. Yeah, because yeah. I just like, I saw a TikTok the other day or like I saw it on Twitter and it was somebody who was, 45 and the interviewer was saying like what's the youngest that you would be with and he's like what's the age of consent 18 and they were like what do you think that you would have in common with an 18 year old he was just like well she's of age that's really weird to go yeah i mean it was gross and it's gross to think that people think that way but it's just the aspect of 18 does feel so young like when i really look back and when i think about me as an 18 year old and i i agree with you of like different people are different ages at different times for sure like age is but a number but at the same time i think that there's a lot of development that goes in between 18 and 21 yeah i i think the the age of consent thing that is a hard question like in terms of finding a a hard number that's like this is a good cutoff type situation because you could say you could say 21 you could say 18 i don't know if there's like a a good number there oh, yeah i don't know it, it's just, yeah not any younger than 18 oh for sure not younger <laughs> yeah. than 18 cuz i i like i just remember being like oh when i'm 18 i'm a quote unquote adult but then when i got to 18 i definitely didn't feel like an adult yeah. and then when i got to 21 i didn't feel like an adult and i feel like i've always been mature for my age so it's not like oh i just was kind of like la 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 like i still was mature for my age and was well developed i feel like but i still feel like there's so much about life experience that happens and i always remember kind of being resentful to that when people said that when i was younger because i thought i knew so much better i mean i had a pretty at the point of 18 if i was to say like my understanding of the world was almost non-existent yeah like i had a very I, I I grew up in a small town. We had some exposure to travel and those different things more centered around sports. So it was kind of like this little bubble that I stayed in. It wasn't like we went to these different areas to really learn the culture of those places. Like we popped into different areas in the U.S., it's, spent time at hotels, spent time at 
ballparks and that was it. So then I didn't really get a whole lot outside of like meeting different people, which was nice. But in those instances, I'm like around people who are generally in the same um, like income I would say, and, and similar life experience, some being varying and different, but to the greater degree, I didn't have a whole lot of exposure. That's why college was so different because then I get on a, a baseball team of 40 guys who are all from all over with way different life experiences. And that was like, like I said, an eye-opening situation for me. Yeah. So you said you still don't feel like an adult? Yeah, in the grand scheme of things, probably not. Yeah. I think the most adult thing will be when we're blessed to have our, our first child. Yeah. That will be like the moment of like, okay, I'm a, I'm an adult now. Yeah. yeah. I, st- I just feel young still. Like I feel, and it's not even that I don't feel mature. It's just that I still feel like there's so much life to For be sure. lived. So in the grand scheme, I feel young. And I don't think that's ever going to go away as long as you continue to take care of your body and take care of your mind and like continue to progress in life. I don't think that that should or will ever go away. Yeah. Getting better with time, baby. All right. So do you have a comfort album? Comfort album. Mm -hmm. Probably Mike's album, The Highs. Well, you snagged that for me. I just, it's so easy for me to turn that on in any scenario. It's very easy to listen to. I know every song of every lyric. If you guys want to have a sing along <laughs> and and compete on who knows the most words. We talked about that of having Miguel play a song and seeing who could guess it the quickest yeah. because I think we'd give each other a run for our, each other's See, money. Here's the thing. I don't know if I know all the names. Like that's I could, what I was I could thinking continue about. the song. Yeah. If I just heard a little bit, I could continue the song, but I don't think I can name the specific name of every song. But for the highs, I think I can. Really? Yes. I'm terrible with names of songs. Like yeah. I can sing along and I know the jingle and those different things. That's for a ton of music for me. Yeah. But for something like that, because I've heard the song so many times, then I feel a little bit differently. But if you were just to have like guess for especially for popular songs right now oh yeah like i would be able to sing along but i do not know the title of so many songs if it is popular on instagram or tiktok and like i know that jingle Mm -hmm. i may know it better there but i haven't listened to like usa's top 50 yeah i have no idea what people are listening to like mike's the high album has been on my spotify wrapped for two years yeah so Yeah, I would say mine too that came to mind were Mike, uh, the highs, and then Mac Miller swimming. Yeah, those are two that I I love to be able to go back to. And it's it's always nice because, again, I know the lyrics, I know the songs, I can kind of have it on and zone out of it, but I can also listen to it and I just feel very comforted by by it. Mac Miller's Blue Slide Park could be that for me. Mm. That album is really good. Yeah, Mac Miller as a whole, just love it. Which I did want to talk about Spotify Wrapped a little bit here. Do you feel like your Spotify Wrapped was accurate to truly you. Well, every year I am not surprised, but also slightly embarrassed with how many minutes it says I listen because it's on 24 seven. Cause I have every scenario I have music playing in some essence. So like if I, I wake up and then I do have some music on in the background, I have music going when I'm working and then I have music when I'm training obviously and then we listen to music in the evening so mm-hmm. there's literally just like background music all the time <laughs> yeah literally and so I thought it was pretty representative of of me like lo-fi beats are the things that I listen to for work so that's always going to be like super high on my list um so I like with those lo-fi beats I only know playlist I don't know any song name I don't know any artist yeah. I just know like which playlist and and Spotify I've used it so much mm-hmm. Spotify's custom playlists for me are so good that I don't even have to think about it I can just click it and it's a fresh new playlist kind of and it you know shuffles through and it's music that I enjoy and it's things that I can focus with and all that kind of stuff so it's pretty aligned Yeah do you feel like your top five songs were? I, I, I'd have to go back and look. Um, I think three of the five were Mike songs. Mm-hmm. So probably. Um, I was surprised to see All My Life, <laughs> All My Life, that song. I was surprised I didn't see that song because I was addicted, addicted to that song for probably 
at least five or six weeks. Well, I'm interested. So it has still the tab on your Spotify. And if you go to like your top songs, it has them in order. So it has the top five. And then I saw that all my life was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It was number eight for me. So it just missed the top five. What was number one? It was like, it wasn't a Mike song. It wasn't. No, it was Rex. It was Huck Mitchell. Well, yours was. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about the number one for me. I don't know. It was that all is well or oh um, uh, Hans um, Williams. Hans Williams. I almost just said Hans. Kim. <laughs> Hans Kim. Hans Kim. I'm trying Pull to think. It up. I'm trying to think of. Um, do I just type in wrapped? No, it's uh. So if you go to the top where it has like all music podcasts, all then, is well. Yeah, all is well by Hans Williams. What was number two for you? Wusa. Number two is Wusa for me too. Air five. Uh, two hours by Toby Lou. The for number three. That's surprising. Yeah, I mean, I don't. Is this still in order? Yeah. Oh, uh, B and B. We had the same two and four. Wow. wow. White dress was five. Life got crazy was five. Oh, and then number six was the song that I love. When you bad like that by Jacquees and Future, <laughs> the one that you do not know the title to most of the time. Never, but I I sing along to every word of that song. You know I what love that my song. number six was what? It's a song called Sundown. Have you heard it before? No. Well, it's well, I'm one, sure I've heard it. It's one that goes so well on loop. Interesting. Like the end of it goes perfectly right into the beginning of it. So I would train or go on walks. That's what I do a lot of times is I'll put one song on loop that I like. And then I can kind of that allows me to quiet my mind and zone out and then be able to just think about things because it's something I've heard before. And so I can just kind of go through it. I like that. Uh, Snooze by SZA. Oh, mine was Hands and Knees by Rex. Oh, interesting. Um, Forever by Jesse Reyes and, and Six Lack. You love that song. Too. <laughs> I love that song. <laughs> oh, my God. Do I love that mine song? Was, mine was All My Life. Oh, um, my. Uh, see, it's still not even up there on mine. I don't oh know what gosh. happened. I don't know. I don't. I feel yeah, like I listen to it even all the fan. time. Then the next one was Best Man by Mike. Mine was Around You by Mike. And then the next three. All right. You're going to laugh. So it's Sativa. <laughs> I'm uh-huh. addicted to that song. Life you used is good. to hate that song. I did. And then I got obsessed with it. Mm-hmm. Some songs do that to me. Then Life is Good by Sir. Yeah, by Sir. And then Tell Me It's Over by Jacquees. My next three were Come Back to Earth by Mac Miller, then Alpharetta by Rex, and then Do Better. And then it goes into more Mike songs, Good Day, then Small Worlds by Mac, then Where I Belong by Rex. So my, I literally, I think I guessed mine when we were talking about our top five artists. I think that I was like, I think Mike's going to be my number one. Yeah. Then I think Rex is going to be on there. I think Russ is going to be on there. And I thought that it would be Mac. And then I was like, number five is likely Code of the Friend. And then that was literally what it was. Look at you. So on know brand. what you listen to. It's crazy. I do. Yeah. I, it is crazy. But I bet your uh, Spotify for the podcast were... Um, what what were those? I mean, the the only ones that I really listen to, I don't I don't listen to a whole lot of podcasts on Spotify. Oh yeah, that's true. I only listen so to Rogan. probably was just Rogan. Yeah, I only listen to like the Rogan episodes that I get excited for the guests. You want to know what my top podcast was on Spotify? I have no, ours. It was ours. <laughs> this one. <laughs> Ops. Go you. You know, you got to be your own number one fan. Absolutely. I'm out here grinding. <laughs> if YouTube had one. Oh, Our yeah. podcast would be well, number one Well, that's the that. other thing about Spotify rap, which I also, I need, if someone has an in on Spotify or works for Spotify, I need you to DM me or comment on this or something because I heard a rumor, I do not know if it's true, that Spotify does not count your November and December plays and then it just starts over. So it's January through October. So Mariah Carey just eats it. I mean, yeah, she basically gets screwed, but- I need to know if that's true because I put in a lot of hours during November and December. And if those aren't being counted, then what am, what am I even doing it for? It's just tracking for 10 months. That's what it is. Yeah, it, it should say that. It should say your 10 months of 2023. Interesting. Or whatever it may be. And then also within the Spotify wrapped, there was one other thing that I was going to ask, but I really just need to know about those two months, if those are counted or not. Oh, what I was going to say is it doesn't always feel like it counts when it comes to you and I, because sometimes you are playing the music on your phone. Sometimes I'm playing it on mine. And then we do listen to music also on YouTube. So I feel like it doesn't always count everything. And I wish I had like a total stat. 
I that would just make me happy. Why does it matter? It would just make me happy. I don't know. <clears throat> okay. I'll look into that. All right. What is the best movie you for- watched recently? Dumb Money. I was going to say the same. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's like we watched it together. I know. It's crazy. Um, I really enjoyed that movie. That was, it was funny. It was very good. It was funny. Uh, it was cool to have a recent story mm-hmm. that was, you know, really happened that wasn't like all about and yeah. how crappy it was, you know, it you was, might need to bleep that out. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> um, but I, I thought it was a, a fun movie to to watch and, and kind of just the the way they built the story was great. Yeah. And it was even when we were we watched the preview and stuff, I didn't realize like it was literally about what had just happened with GameStop. It, like, I don't know why it didn't click for me to begin with normally because things I feel like aren't coming out that soon. But it was fun because I remember all of those tweets of like to the moon, to the moon and pushing up GameStop. Well, it was three years ago. Yeah. And everyone being like, should I sell? Should I sell? And so it was really fun to to see that. I also really enjoyed King Richard. I literally I was like the last good movie I watched was King Richard. What was your favorite part of King Richard? I don't know if I can remember like verbatim a specific part. I just, I first, I love Will Smith. And then second, I just thought that it was such a well-told story as a whole. And I just, I feel like a movie, since there's so many movies that come out, I don't watch that many movies because it really has to interest me as a whole to be like, I'm going to spend my time sitting down and watching it. And Also, if I watch a movie and then I immediately recommend it to people, and especially people I like, then it's like, okay, this is a banger. And I remember as soon as we finished it, it was like, we need to tell people this was a great movie and they need to watch it. I think an important part of storytelling is just to, for the listener or the viewer to be able to feel the emotion. Yeah. And I felt a lot of emotion throughout that entire movie. I agree with that. And that was really nice because it's it's just like a lot of, of movies as of late just haven't been good movies. And to have a movie like that, that was you know, throughout the entirety, you went up and down with the characters was awesome. Yeah. Outside of those two movies, are there any movies that you feel like are bangers recently? There was a movie, there's a movie that I'm excited to see, which is kind of more of a, a kid movie. It's called If, mm-hmm. and it's about invisible friends written by John, John Krasinski and uh, Steve Carell is in it. Emily Blunt is in it. Um, Matt Damon is Matt in Damon it. Matt Damon is in it. Uh, Ryan Reynolds is in it. That movie I'm excited for, even though it's kind of like a kid movie, I think it's going to be awesome. Yeah, I agree with that. And within King Richard, I just, I really do love like sports movies and especially if they're like based on a true story because I just feel like those are always like the absolute best ones. Yeah, I enjoy sports Like movies. Remember the Titans, so good. The Rookie, so good. Yeah. Both based on true stories both sports movies. We love it. We love to see it. If you are a bikini competitor who has competed well at the regional stage or at the national stage and not placed how you wanted, I would love the opportunity to work with you. If you would inquire via the link in the description box, that would be the first step. And from there, we'll get a call scheduled and I look forward to speaking with you. All right. Speaking of celebrities, what celebrity would you trade lives with for 24 hours? Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> and this also means, again, they're trading. So it's not just you're living their life for 24 hours. They're swapping into your life. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers. Okay. Easily. Do you have any extra context you want to give to that? Well, I just think he's the coolest person ever. <laughs> <laughs> Then maybe wouldn't you want to switch uh, positions with one of his friends so you could hang out with him? No, I think I'd rather be him to see how his mind works. Yeah, I would be very interested to see what it feels like to be inside of his mind. I would also, I think I would like to enjoy one day, 24 hours of Elon Musk's life to really understand the speed in which he has to move and how much he's being pulled in all these different directions, all those different things. That would be interesting. That would be. Anyone else that comes to mind? Um, I, I think that I would like to also, I don't know what female I would want to be, but I'd like to be like a high up, very popular female to see what that feels like. Mm-hmm. Just the attention and, you know, that kind of thing. I would be very curious to experience what that feels like. You know, at first I was thinking, ooh, would I want to switch places with someone like Blake Lively or Megan Fox, who's like, so attractive or like especially Megan Fox has been like the hottest woman on earth multiple times but then when I came back to me would I feel bad true is the question I don't I don't I don't know I think you may feel like better Mm -hmm. because you're just like 
they may be experiencing exactly what you experience. Yeah, that's true. Like you may find yourself in Megan Fox's head and she's just like picking herself apart. Yeah. And um, or like, even just with all the hater, like with all the attention and all of that, there's a lot of downsides, which people don't think about because there are a lot of upsides and there's a lot of privilege that comes with being a celebrity. But it's also that your personal life is now public and that people can say whatever they want to to you. Yeah, I think that doing that would probably unlock a lot of potential in people's mind to yeah. like realize that they're not as different as they maybe thought prior to having the swap type situation. Um, that would be an interesting little experiment if that was at all possible. Yeah. You know, oddly, and I, I would probably need some more time to think on this as a whole, but one of the first people that popped in my head in this, like, was not what I would expect myself to say, was Seth Rogen. And the reason was, is I just feel like his life is so interesting. Like he's got that pottery business and then he's, I just, I don't know why that was one of the first people that popped into my head. Seth Rogen would be an interesting one. It would be very interesting. You know, you know who would be fun to swap lives with? Who? Snoop Dogg. Snoop, Snoop Dogg would be an interesting yeah, one. That Snoop would Dogg be would, interesting. And I'm blanking on the the person that's coming to my mind right now. Um, Rick Rubin. Oh, yeah. Rick Rubin. Changing places with him would be a fascinating situation. Mm. Or Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban would be an interesting one to see the pace of his life mm -hmm. and all the things he's got going on. Yeah. What about Pat McAfee? Pat would be an interesting one. Um, I think that he, I, I, I feel like I have a general idea of what's going on in his mind, just the way that he presents yeah. all of his and how much I've consumed his content mm -hmm. over the last, you know, six years or so. Yeah. I'll need to think more on it to give a better answer because I don't feel like Seth Rogen is my final answer. Unless you want to swap Seth <laughs> Rogen, <laughs> then let's figure it out. Well, I mean, he's just stoned making pottery all day. Yeah, could be cool. Could be cool. I, I mean, who? I, I, John Mayer would be another one for me. Mm -hmm. What's What's his life like? Is he just strumming on a guitar all day? Oh, which guys? Fun fact: Alex didn't know that John Mayer was canceled. I didn't. I had no idea he was canceled. Yeah, no I can't idea. cancel him. <laughs> It's impossible. I love his music far too much. He was like, I was like, he was like, I was like, he was listening to John Mayer and I was like joking with him. And I said, I can't believe you're listening to that. And he was like, why wouldn't I be? I was like, he's canceled. Don't you know? Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I don't even know who else is canceled. I don't keep up with it. I feel like being canceled at this point is just becoming more popular. You know who I think that you would enjoy living in their life? Who? Justin Bieber. I, I don't think so. You don't? That much, like, think how much planning or like Post Malone, mm -hmm. someone who is so ridiculously popular that they can't just go and go to the grocery, or like go to the grocery, go to a gas station. Like, I think Aaron Rodgers is tremendously popular, but I think he can still go to the gas station. Mm -hmm. Like, Justin Bieber cannot go to yeah. general and do general things. He has to have security with him all the time. Like, I do not want that life. Yeah, but, like, how much do you even leave the house to begin with? Right now? Yeah. I mean, I am glued to my desk a lot right now. If I'm Justin Bieber, I'm not glued to my desk. Yeah, but he's, like, doing other things. Sh okay, sure. If I'm just hanging around the house, I guess that would be fine. <laughs> But I also think that I think that it is very difficult to live a life where you've beat the game of life in in that context. Mm -hmm. Like to have the the resources to do whatever you want, I think is much more scary than what people think it is. Because you've just like done this race for so long, you have all the tools. N you know now what? What's the purpose? What are what is your purpose? And being in a and like being able to move in that way, um, especially as an, a creative in his in his realm, like that's tough. And to be as popular as he's been from such a young age, so hard. I bet. Yeah. Which speaking of success as a whole, how would you say that you define success for yourself? Because I feel like success means something different for each person. I think this has changed over the years and will continue to change for me. Um, I've had instances where success was very driven by the quantity of money that I made. And so it was just numbers. It was like, if I made more, then I was successful. If I made less, then I failed type situation. And that was a very hard spot to be in. Um, because it was it was such highs and lows. And then I moved to a place where um, it, where finances are still something that I, you know I'm working on and it's not like I've got the the cash flow that I can just do whatever I want type situation. But my focus has gotten to a place where 
my happiness is much more important to me and how I'm going about my business and how I'm helping people. Because I think one catalyst that has been from the very beginning is how can I help others? And that's to my core. And and I, I think that with having the the one-on-one coaching, it's such an easy way for me to see that it, you know, every single week and months and, and six months a year, I'm able to see that change. And it's very gratifying to me. And I can really, it's, it's a, a sample size that I'm able to look at and say, okay, I'm, I'm creating change. I'm making an impact. And that is important to me. Um, and so I think that it just depends on the different realm that I'm speaking to, because there's different aspects that I would see success in throughout my life, whether it be within our relationship, whether it be within work, whether it be within my personal health, whatever the case may be. How do you currently measure success? So if you're looking and you're saying, okay, this is what success means to me, then how do you measure that right now in your life? I rely very heavily on the promises that I'm making to myself. Like how am I setting myself up and what are the things that are most important to me? And am I staying in alignment or moving in alignment with those things? That would be a successful day or a non-successful day for me, um, as well as moving to a place where I give myself more grace when those things just don't, it's not possible for that particular day because of life's events. Mm-hmm. Um, so my day is is very much so dictated off of those promises that I've made to myself. And, and some of those could be as simple as, did I drink all my water that day? Did I hit my food for that particular day? Did I get in the gym? Did I hit my steps? Like all the small things that I know are going to add to me having a successful day. Did I call a friend? Did I love on you? Did I um, spend time with the dogs? (laughs) Did I, uh, was I present in the time that I was working with my clients? Was I present in the time that I was working with staff? Like are those are those things being fulfilled? That's my perfect day. It's not necessarily like a as quantitative as numbers or anything of that nature, but um, those are the most important things to me. Yeah, I think that when I think about success in the past, I I think that I just thought success meant having money or being a celebrity or something like that. But now I feel like success to me is much more about how happy I am. Because at the end of the day, if I have all of the money in the world, but I'm not happy, then I'm not happy. And so that doesn't feel like success. It is a successful thing to make a lot of money. And like, I think it's something that takes a lot to be able to do. But I think that for me, it's really about what am I going to be, like you said, proud of at the end of the day? What am I going to feel fulfilled about at the end of the day and at the end of my life of how I lived it? And so I feel like success to me right now means being able to help people within our job. I absolutely love what we do. And success also means like a healthy marriage and relationship between you and I. That is something that I think a lot about when I think about success. And then also just being able to take care of our families and have a family. Like those are all things that feel like success and would be my definition of success right now. I always thought that when I would hear people move away from financial driven success goals that they they had already gotten their bag and they were that's why they were not focused on it any longer. And because of that thinking, I just thought that we just needed to make more and more and more, and I would be like able to move away from it. But my real happiness came from detaching that and that being its own thing. Like this mm-hmm. can, we can have success in this realm, but this is not the determinant of all of my success. Like I can have success across so many other things that are not financially driven. And so if you're listening and you're like, well, I haven't gotten to the financial status that would allow for me to be happy yet. It's like that it's never going to come. Like it's not ever going to be just dependent on that number because that leads you to a place of being very empty when you reach the different milestones that you're, you know, if you're hanging your hat solely on that, it's just going to be very unfulfilling. Yeah. Well, the last question I have for you today, especially because this is our new year episode, it's actually not about new year's resolutions or goals. It's about what role gratitude plays in your life and especially how you cultivate a sense of gratitude when going through hard times. Because obviously we've had a very hard past year or so. And I think that it's important to be able to talk about gratitude in that. 
so how do I how do I find gratitude? Like how do how do you practice or cultivate gratitude when going through hard times? It's when you're going through something hard, it's very hard to think about the positives. I feel like it's hard to just think about everything you're grateful for because you're thinking about all the things that are either happening to you or all the things that you don't have. So in those moments where it feels like life is just so hard, how do you practice that gratitude? I would say um, maybe listing out the things that I am grateful for. Um, spe- like telling myself the things that I'm grateful for that I'm fortunate to have because oftentimes when scenarios are looking bleak, it's very easy to focus on these things that are right in front of my face. But if I'm able to zoom out and and remind myself of all the things that I have in my life that I'm grateful for, then it kind of you know, shifts that perspective and allows for me to have a better understanding of really all the things that I do have in my life because it's just so easy to, to hyper-focus on things that are not going well, like it's, it's, and, and for those things to be able to snowball as you are, you know, going through different things of clustering, as we've talked about a number of times on the podcast of just, um, one thing goes bad. And then all of a sudden your whole day is bad because of that one thing. Whereas really that one thing was the problem. And then you took that mentality or that, um, perspective into everything that you were you know, working on throughout the day. And so um, being able to shift and, and compartmentalize how different things are going on, that not everything is in, you know, unison or in flow. It's like, this is how this went and that can be it by itself. And then this is how I'm going to treat this situation and I'm in control. And, and I think that that's the other thing is that with, with your emotions and your mind, like you are in control, not your emotions and not your mind. And so always reminding myself that this is just a temporary feeling and what I need to do is still the thing that I need to do. And if I don't have the capacity to do it, I need to either let those around me know that I'm, you know, I can't do what I'm, what's being asked of me at this moment, or I need to buck up and and do what I said I'm going to do. Um, so keeping those things in mind. Now, when you say like having power over your emotions or your emotions don't control you, I think that sometimes people hear that and think, okay, if I have an emotion, that means I just shut it out. Is that how you view that? Or what would you say that looks like for you when you say those emotions don't have to control you? I don't think it's a matter of shutting it out. I think it's a matter of recognizing it and saying like, I I saw this from Layla Hermosi mm-hmm. is that I use it as kind of this separate personality of this other being in my head of like, Hey, um, Timmy is bitching. Like he, he's having a rough day, but Alex is going to have the day that I've set out to have, and I'm going to continue on the path. And I'm sure that as I get through the task and get rolling here and get into flow with whatever I'm working on, um, things will turn around and, and the day will get better. And if it doesn't, you know, I'm SOL type situation. But the reality is that nine times out of 10, things turn around to some degree. I think maybe people will will find themselves in a place where turning around is like a complete 180 instead of it just being like, it got better, but it didn't stay as sucky as it was. Yeah. I think that when it comes to emotions, you can still have them and feel them, but you don't always have to just let them control you. You can kind of say, I have sadness right now, or I have anger right now, but that's not who I am, or that's not everything that's happening to me. And I think when it comes to gratefulness, I'm sure people have heard things of like gratefulness drives out fear or it helps with stress. And there are studies to show that being like having a grateful like practice or having gratefulness can reduce stress or even reduce symptoms of depression. But I think more than anything, it's recognizing that there hasn't really been a time in my life that I've been able to be consumed by anxiety and gratefulness at the same time. And so with that, then it's like, okay, then if I'm anxious or if I'm dealing with something, what can I turn to to help with that? And in those times, I think people sometimes don't look at some of the simple things that we can be grateful for, where even if it's something as I'm going on a walk, I'll think, oh, I'm so grateful for the layers that I have on, or I'm so grateful for a neighborhood that I can walk in and that it's safe for me to walk in. Or when I come home, I'm so grateful for a home that has heat and I'm grateful for a home in general. And I think that when I boil it down to those simple things, as well as the bigger things too, and like like you said, of really saying them to myself, it is so, so helpful because 
there is so much that you could clump. There is so much that you could say isn't going your way or that stinks about your life. And I literally lived my life that way of making lists of all the things that were happening to me and all the things going on in my life that, oh my gosh, I can't believe this happened and this happened and this happened. But really being able to flip the script on that and I don't sit and list off those things anymore. I sit and I really think about what I am grateful for in those moments. Then I just am in a much better headspace overall. And it doesn't mean that I still can't have sadness and just because I'm grateful means that I I never have a negative emotion. I think it's being able to recognize that those emotions come and they can be validated and they can be felt, but they do not have to take over everything and they do not have to be the main focus. And I think that's one of the most powerful things. And especially when talking about like, how does gratefulness have a point in your life? I think that it's so much of my life because without it, then all you're going to do is focus on the negative. And so I think it's so helpful to just push you more and more towards that positive. And like we've talked about, you and I agree, so much is mental. And I think that what goes on between your ears does a lot. And a lot of people let their mind shoot them in the foot. And they wonder, why am I not seeing progress? Why am I not getting this out of life? And it's like, it's because of what's happening in between your freaking ears. But I am very proud of what I've been able to somewhat train my brain to do. I mean, you have to get reps in of experiencing these things of that doesn't have to be how my mind thinks and I can change what that is. Absolutely. Do you, like going back to the the individual uh, of like, you know, not seeing progress or, or I, I, I want to so badly just like shake those people and be like, you are the reason that you are not making the progress that you want. Like you are holding yourself back by this narrative that you continue to make in your own mind every day of like what you are or what you can do or what you're not able to do. Um, and I think that that can come back to gratitude as well of just realizing how capable you are in, in different situations. Yeah. And I think that we've talked about it of what it, how to be successful, however you deem that, or how to see success when it comes to business. One thing that we've always said is to have like crazy belief in yourself. And I think that's, again, a part of the mentality of if you're always thinking, I'm not going to accomplish this or I'm not going to do this, then you're likely not because you're training your brain to always have that as the default. Where now in my life, it's something where there's not a question of if I can do it. It's just that it might be hard to do. And that's something that I've trained my mind to do. I literally used to think that way. I used to be negative all the time. I used to always wonder why not me or they must be nice, lucky them. But now I look at it and it's even in the times of our life where it's been like, holy hell, how in God's green earth are we going to get through this? It's never really a question of my mind of if we are going to get through it. It's just that, okay, what's the next step? And I think that's super powerful to be able to have in your head instead of going to doomsday. It's just what's the next step that I can take because the – there, there's no other answer except to keep going. Right. It's, it's practicing presence. Yeah. And, and being able to see what's in front of you, take that task, do it, and not get overwhelmed by the 115 next steps that come after that first one because those don't matter unless the first one's done. Mm-hmm. And too often people get caught up in like how much work it's going to take or what the end result is going to be and just never get going. And um, being able to just focus on day-to-day tasks and breaking things down to as small as you need them to be to where they don't overwhelm you. They don't cause you anxiety. You can just do the one thing, even if it's just as simple as like, I'm going to grab my toothbrush and put toothpaste on it and brush my freaking teeth. And that be something I check off my list as a positive, just to get momentum. Like if it needs to be that small, take that small of a bite. Um, his tail lit on fire. Did you see that? Well, I figured that that's what had happened with the way that you were looking, but I didn't know if it he was put just it out close. with his mouth. <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, you haven't tail- seen the dogs being crazy behind the scenes of all of this, but the dogs have been on one. His tail was on fire. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! Well, momentum doesn't exist, so I don't know why you use that word. Um, but yeah. 
momentum very much does exist. Sue is making a joke about a sportscaster who has no sense whatsoever. Probably two years ago said something that momentum doesn't exist. Which even if they were just talking about in the realm of sports, momentum 100% exists. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us on Jan 1, 2024. We're very excited for another year of the podcast. This is episode 146, and it's just the beginning. So we would absolutely love if going into this new year, you shared this with a friend that you think would really enjoy our podcast. And we would also really love if you gave us any topics you want us to hear us to talk about. Absolutely. Then we're here for it because we've done lots of topics based on your guys' DMs, your comments, your emails, and we would love to continue doing that. Let's do it. All right. Well, here's to 2024, Alex's year. This is my year, baby. This is all of our years, guys. I believe (laughs) it. 2024.